got a brand new suit. I got a brand new tie. I got a brand new twinkle in my eye. Do you know the reason why? I'm a brand new girl and I won't dispute. That's the reason why I got a brand new tie, got a brand new suit. On the outside, I gotta look my best. Put on my tap shoes, gray spats, double breasted vest. I'm gonna wear my stick pin. I'm gonna have a whirl. I got a brand new time, a brand, I'm a brand new girl. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm gonna tell you a story. Um, I had a sister, Norma. I knew she was my sister because when she died, I had an ischemic infarction, or in poetic terms, I had a stroke in my pons. Pronounced like the Fonz, who my sister Norma loved a lot. <laughs> I had, <clears throat> they called it what she had, deaf, but from birth she had a brittle bone disease. She was born with a broken collarbone and four other broken bones inside of her ear. They called it osteoporosis imperfecta. What a life sentence to be called imperfecta. I'm glad she couldn't hear that she had osteoporosis imperfecta because it would have made her feel really sick and it would have made her really sad. Her skin was transparent as was her love for me. After she died, I guess she moved in like inside my body. Exactly inside me, as close as white on bread, which I just made up. It's supposed to be white on rice, but I like white on bread. <laughs> She was right directly under my skin. I would stick her blue veins through my skin for my own. I kept her well protected when she was inside me. After my stroke is when they found her right on my MRI, right next to the dark spaces left in my brain. They removed her carefully and gave me lots of prescription drugs for the pain. After the operation, I felt much lighter, not inspired very much by anything. Lightweight, dull, and I felt just a huge loss inside me. Along with that certain kind of emptiness I had never felt before. My neck didn't seem to get so tired holding up my head. Her delicate removal left me bereft for someone I didn't even know that I had. I was wet one day and dry the next. I had lost a wet, juicy place inside. When Norma was inside me, I had motivation and talent and I would write and draw all the time. The feeling that sometimes I was Tina Turner and sometimes a Buddhist must have come directly from her. Mm -hmm. She was high-waisted and long-legged like Tina Turner and she loved to sing. She gave me the feeling that I could fight like Angela Davis, I could suffer and paint like Frida Kahlo, I could be old like Louise Bourgeois, who was motivated enough until she was like 96 years old to draw in the middle of the night when she couldn't sleep. I could walk Italian like Al Magnani. <laughs> I could be queer like Dusty Springfield. I could be funny like Ellen DeGeneres, like Rachel Mars. <laughs> <laughs> I could masturbate like Patti Smith while I was thinking about Annie Lennox. <laughs> <laughs> I could be bad like my friend Gloria who lives in the Virgin Islands. She's edgy and poetic. I could be edgy and poetic, like Gloria's girlfriend, who was Audrey Lord. I could sing soulful and sultry like Amy Winehouse, who always makes me think of my sister Norma. Life is a moment in space. When the dream is gone, it's a lonelier place. I kiss the morning goodbye. Down inside, you know, we never know why. The road is narrow and long when eyes meet eyes and the feeling is strong. I turn away from the wall. I stumble and I fall, but I give you it all. Before my stroke, and before prescription drugs, my veins sounded like this. Ping, 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 ping. <laughs> and then afterwards, and getting my medication, which costs $180 a month for one pill, now my veins go like this. Ping. I wonder what else got erased from my memory. Of course, I'll never remember what it was because it's gone. 
There's a clean slate that exists now, right at the pathway to my gray matter. It doesn't matter. So it's like clear sailing, waiting to get filled with new ideas and prescription drugs. With you eternally mine, in love there's no measure of time. We planned it all to start. You and I live in each other's heart. And we may be oceans away. I you feel my love and I, I hear what you say. No truth is ever a lie. I stumble and fall, but I give you it all. When my mom had shock treatments, they would on purpose pulverize a part of her brain. And that part would be gone forever. They didn't even keep a DVD of it, erasing what they called ungodly thoughts in her memory to make her normal. It doesn't matter now. It could have been the place where she remembered love for someone special like her sister Norma she loved most of all. I know the shocks made her forget that she had loved my dad once. Before she died, she told me that she didn't want to be buried next to Joe, her husband, my father, for eternity. I don't know if I was the only one she told that to, because when she died, they lowered her right into the ground on top. Her casket on top of his, ignoring her desire as they had ignored her desire her whole life. I like to think that my mother would have wanted to be on top of him if they hadn't removed the memory of her Joe, my dad. I wonder what I'll do now. Because I always get scared in the night, but I know why. Nobody used to call it midnight madness. She was scared in the dark, because in the dark not only couldn't she hear, but she couldn't see. Her eyes were bad, they said. It was probably my fault. Maybe because once I got struck by lightning with my eyes open, looking out at the dark night. The doctor said it should have burned my retina, but it didn't. It must have missed mine and burned hers. I am a woman in love. I'm talking to you. You know I know how you feel. What a woman can do. It's a right I defend. Over and over. Sometimes trying to get to sleep, I would feel Norma rustling around inside me trying to get comfortable. She would listen to my heart beating on my left side and then she'd listen to it on my right side and then she'd laugh when my legs started jumping. Eventually, without knowing why, I'd have to put my head in a cardboard box in order to go to sleep. Funny how, in hindsight, I should have felt her inside of me or seen her at least in my shadow. I spend so much time now sitting and thinking or lying and thinking about her. Sometimes when my thoughts won't stop, I jump up really fast so that all my thoughts just drift down to my feet and my legs so they don't drive me crazy. Morality's on my mind, heavy on my mind, in the shadowy part of my brain where Norma used to be. I don't want to be like just a hindsight from South Park. Shows up in tragedies and lists all the things that could have been done to avert the tragedy in the first place. Mr. Hindsight can fly and he's considered a superhero. There was this fire, like 14 or 13 people were burning in a building. Like, no one could get to them. Mr. Hindsight lands in the crowd and he says, What's wrong? <laughs> and they tell him, Well, 14 or 13 people are burning in that building and you can't get to them. And he says, well, if they had built a fire escape all the way to the top of the building, they could have just climbed out and saved themselves. Or, if they hadn't built the building right next to that building, the fire department could have pulled it up and put their ladder up and they could have rescued the people. The crowd goes, ooh, ah, yes, Mr. Hein said. And he says to the crowd, well, my work here is done. <laughs> he turns and he flies off into the sky to the applause and the thanks of all the crowd. Meanwhile, the people are still burning up in the building. <laughs> Life is a moment in space when the dream is gone, it's a lonely place. I kiss the morning goodbye. Down inside, you know, we never know why. The road is narrow and long, when the eyes meet your eyes, the feeling's strong. I turn away from the wall, I stumble and I fall, but I give you it all. 
I'm a woman in love and I'd do anything to get you into my world and I hold you within. It's a right I defend over and over and over and over again. Thank you. Good morning.